Russ Gerber just explained what the big problem with Tesla stock is right now. He also mentioned a few things that excite him, but mostly he talked about what is not great with Tesla stock right now. I also want to thank to all of you for all of the kind words and wishing my wife a speedy recovery. She is much better now. She's walking fine, although uh, it's still not exactly easy, but she doesn't want my help anymore, although uh, she may need a few rides here and there, but that's about it. It will take some time for her to recover, but it's no longer a tragic situation as it first appeared. So with that being said, let's dive in. So I know Elon's worked very hard to convince young liberal buyers of EVs not to buy a Tesla, but the price is just right. So they got to have sold cars, even with the CEO working very hard not to sell cars. So I don't know. I don't know. I wish I could tell you. I see Gary is working out numbers at 2030 and working back to 370 a share. And I go, yeah, 2030, if they do all that, I, I got 370 a share. But right now I'm in 2023 and they got to sell a certain amount of cars at a profit right now. And we're going to see what that looks like in the next 30 days. So Tesla's in an 8.5% position for us. I haven't made any decisions to lower the allocation at this time. Um, I had to trim some of the Tesla when it reached over a 10% allocation because I'm trying to maintain it at 8.5%. Tesla's delivery numbers are about to come out and some will be really happy, some will be really disappointed whether Tesla exceeds the consensus or delivers below the consensus. There will be some happy and some disappointed people. If Tesla delivers below the consensus, then... Those that want to load up on more Tesla stock because they understand, hey, look, Tesla is working on the next generation vehicle. The cheaper vehicle will sell like hotcakes. And those people will be buying more Tesla stock. And then those that are more short term focused, they will not be happy. But if we have a huge beat, then only Tesla stock shorts will be unhappy. Obviously, Tesla is the king of EVs and clean energy. And Tesla is now in what I would consider a transitionary year um, as they ramp up production in their factories, um, continue to invest in more capacity in factories, and most importantly, launch a whole new product category with the Cybertruck, which will lead growth well into the future. So this is a really important year for Tesla. Generally, every year is very important for Tesla. And I can think of many years that were much more important than this year. For example, when Tesla launched the first Model S or then Tesla was scaling the Model 3 initially when it was launched. Then Tesla made profits for the first time. All of these times I think were quite a bit more important, but of course every year is important. The problem with Tesla is that they've been forced to cut the price of the car by a substantial amount. And these price cuts have spurred sales, but at a huge cost to profits. So right now, Tesla's earnings estimates are for $4 again this year, as it was $4 last year, but with growth of vehicle sales of 50%. And if that is in fact what ends up happening, that would be a wildly disappointing year for Tesla. So if Tesla cannot earn more money selling 50% more cars this would be a huge setback for the company and it would be a really sad reality for Tesla because it means that their margins will be severely impacted into the future compared to what they were in the past. A few things. If you look at the consensus compiled by Tesla, which has the most analysts, so I like this consensus the most, and this is what everyone looks at when they say, did Tesla beat the consensus or did Tesla miss the expectations. This is projecting 1.836 million deliveries for all of 2023. That would be 40% growth, so not 50% growth like what Ross is projecting. So Ross's projections are higher or he's just rounding the numbers up. I personally would not view it as a failure, definitely not, if Tesla actually made less money this year than the last year. Because even if you look, for example, at Morgan Stanley's estimates right here, they are projecting earnings increasing later. And what is their current price target? Currently, it's 220. But their skepticism comes not necessarily from Tesla itself. They are more skeptical about EVs overall. They think EVs are not going to gain huge market share this year, that EVs will 
come down in prices a lot and a lot of automakers that make EVs are going to lose a lot of money. And also, you know, they are going to increase Tesla stock price targets the moment Tesla stock jumps up quite a bit. Another thing about Morgan Stanley is they do not expect the Cybertruck to exceed 100,000 deliveries per year, even 50,000 per year. So they got a 220 price target with basically no Cybertruck sales. Now, they think Tesla will make another truck, but their expectations are fairly low. And most importantly, I think Tesla needs to gain as much market share right now, keep the prices low, even if that means you are not going to make money for now, that prevents other EV makers from entering into the market because they just can't make any profit. I mean, for how long can Ford keep selling vehicles and lose 40% of each sale? They can do it for a while, but a startup cannot. And if Tesla gains a lot more market share and just individual models sell over a million each per year, the economies of scale are going to be absolutely mind-boggling and it will be almost impossible for anyone to compete with Tesla. It seems to me that Ross is more concerned about what is going to happen in the next 12 months, not so much what is going to happen in the next two, three, four, five, ten 10 years. Now, I'm not going to go into all the reasons why I think this is happening. And a lot of them are macro, but some of them are certainly caused by Tesla's own business practices and the practices of their CEO, who is really the CEO of Twitter. Unfortunately for Tesla shareholders, the CEO of Twitter pretends that he's the CEO of Tesla and SpaceX. Now, I know that he does do this job somehow or another, and I know that the team working at Tesla is excellent and somehow does their job one way or another, but I also know there are 24 hours in a day, and one, no matter who they are, only gets the same 24 hours. And within that day, there are things like sleeping, eating, and going to the bathroom. And we can't always work during those periods of time. So if you subtract out maybe the handful of hours that Elon sleeps, eats, and goes to the bathroom, and then works at Twitter full time for sure, how much time does he really have to focus on full self-driving, Cybertruck, four or five factory expansions? I think... A lot of people would be very surprised just how effective Elon Musk is. But also because Tesla has gotten so big now, it's just more important that Elon maintains the culture and then pushes product innovation. If he has good team members, then they can do most of the work for him. But most important and key decisions, especially to do with product innovation, that has to go through Elon. And I think Elon is doing his part here just fine. I wish he was working at Tesla full time, but that is not that realistic. But in about one year, I think we will have a very good picture of just how effective the team is without Elon. I think they are very effective. And we especially want to watch the next few quarters and see what happens here, especially with the earnings. And now what I've been told and what I believe is that the team there is excellent. That's why Tesla's still our top investment. But if you're going to tell me that Tesla's going to sell 50% more cars and not make any more money, this is a huge setback for Tesla. That's just the bottom line. Literally. That is a great one-liner. However, the problem with that one-liner is it will not include things like full self-driving. I mean, it doesn't really show up in the bottom line right now because it's not solved yet, but I believe it will be. If some investors or fund managers or Wall Street analysts, if they decide it is time to sell Tesla stock and Tesla stock drops because of that, that will open a huge buying opportunity again for everyone. And when, in my opinion, inevitably full self-driving is solved later, eventually all of them will come flooding back in, except it will be too late. The problem is that a lot of people are betting on Tesla going substantially higher in the short term, but I just question how that can be possible unless earnings estimates are revised upwards and Tesla shows in Q1 that they haven't had to sacrifice margins like what analysts are expecting. And that may or may not be true. When I asked Elon myself about margins, he said that any margin benefit that they get from lower costs 
take some time because of the contracts they have with suppliers and that in Q1, we should not expect to see a margin uh, increase from lower costs. But over the course of the year, the cost of building vehicles will go down. Ross Gerber mentioned the magic word in the short term. He does not see how Tesla stock will go up. In the short term, to me, it does not matter at all what Tesla stock does. If anything, if it's lower, then I can just buy it cheaper. And this year will be revealing. Many automakers will be struggling even more. And some will go bankrupt, perhaps, with smaller ones. We have already seen a few of them. Here's one example for you from January of this year. Lucid, for example, just cut 18% of its workforce. Clearly, they are struggling. Archimoto is pretty much dead now. The stock is down 99% almost in the last 12 months. Expect to see more companies having trouble like this. So we just really can't model out what Tesla is going to earn. And I don't think any of the analysts really know, but I'm hoping and praying that they kill estimates one way or another, because if we're only going to do $4 in earnings, Tesla is not going to be an exciting stock this year. And that is something that investors are going to have to consider moving forward, that Tesla might be a lot more mature of a company than people might want to accept as it tries to move into growth into the next level. But right now, I'm not making any judgments because I think they're going to sell a record amount of cars. They have a great product lineup. They have um, the move into clean energy storage, which is growing rapidly and worth a ton. And they have a really bright future in front of them. So although the CEO of Tesla actually works at another company, you know, maybe that'll be okay. But we'll see in April. For those that are holding Tesla stock short term, it has always been a roller coaster. But for those of us that hold it for the long term, I think we are just fine. When Tesla launches the next generation vehicle and once the sales start to really pick up and the deliveries really kick in for that next generation vehicle or the lineup of these vehicles, a lot of them will start flocking back in. I mean, as far as predictions go, this one is pretty easy to predict. In 2017, Tesla launched the Model 3. And what happened the next year? Deliveries more than doubled. In 2010, Tesla launched the Model Y. And what happened the next year? The deliveries almost doubled in one single year. We can expect to see similar trends with future product launches as well. We'll have the Cybertruck. And then we'll have a cheaper Tesla vehicles as well as some sort of a van. That makes me excited. And this is the Tesla stock buying opportunity explained by Elon Musk. My name is Matt Posius. Like and subscribe if you haven't yet. And I will see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching.